Hi, I'm Talissa. And I'm Rachel, and this is Transatlantic Crime, a true crime podcast that covers stories from each side of the pond. Every week, we will both cover a separate story with a running theme. Disclaimer, this podcast will contain swearing and details that some people may find offensive. If you are of a sensitive disposition, listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Transatlantic Crime. Crime. So close. Okay. Part two. Part two. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're going to get straight into it because Talissa has so much to talk about. England was like populated. Like as soon as the dinosaurs died, people started living fucking right here. Like (laughs) it's all like Neanderthals were wondering about. Like we weren't fucking around. (laughs) Like law, our law didn't start like in when we decided to like build a hut on someone no, else's you land. Like you, you didn't have like what we had, uh, colonies and like we didn't start a new society. Like we started from scratch. You, you just <laughs> there were just people, <laughs> yeah, and you had to deal with it. So if you're, we, uh, we were fighting Romans. Yeah, like, <laughs> English you, Britons were fighting Romans. <laughs> yes. Um, Okay, so this is part two of last week's episode, which we are discussing the history of death penalties. And my or our episode last week was me talking about the U.S., a very condensed version of the U.S. uh, death penalty Mm -hmm. history. So this week we are talking about Talissa and the very extensive version of the U.K. (laughs) history of the death penalty. Yeah. We are fuckers as well. <laughs> Way worse than you. <laughs> Way worse. Oh, man. We had I've, a bit like, of a head start. <laughs> yes. And, and that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, you guys had beheadings. You had, like, I was thinking about, like, the William Wallace, like, drawn and Being pulled apart by horses. Methods. and Yeah. It, yeah it's All fucked. that. I'm imagine so excited. Me, imagine I'm king. <laughs> that's what it was like just fucking savagery <laughs> okay so let's get let's get on with it because trust me this is a this yeah. is a fucking let's do strap it strap in so from as early as the anglo-saxon era otherwise known as the dark ages mm-hmm. which is the year 410 to 1066 ad wow obviously 1066 was the battle of hastings and yeah. then we had william the conqueror um become king Mm-hmm. Um, so before that, it was different. Um, yeah. I believe in the Anglo-Saxon time. era, it was Alfred, King Alfred, who I'm going down a little like yes. history spiral because yeah. I studied this at university. But King Alfred, oh, no, he must have been after because he basically translated the Bible from Latin into Old English. Right. Yes. So it wasn't just for monks and holy men. It was for everyone. Yeah. So that's what he's famous for. So we're talking about that era. Okay. So even then, people were mainly hanged for capital offences. Okay. But again, as we've discussed, capital offences can be oh. fuck all. It could be right. uh, pickpocketing. It could be cheating on your husband. It could be... Anything. Anything. Anything yeah. that the king at the time wasn't fond of. <laughs> no. <laughs> Farting too loudly in a theatre. Death. Oh, no. <laughs> In the late 1200s, um, hanging morphed into the hideous practice of drawing, hanging, and quartering, preserved for those who had committed treason. So being hung, drawn, and quartered is dragging the person to the place of their execution on the back of a wagon. Mm -hmm. Then they're hanged. And I don't know if they're dead by this point, but if they're not dead, Mm -hmm. this happens anyway. They're disemboweled, Mm -hmm. beheaded. They'll definitely be dead by then. Yeah. Um, then their bodies burnt and quartered, so they Jeez. cut you literally in four. So you've got like an ar- two arms and two legs in like four bits. Um, then your head and your limbs were publicly displayed following the execution, Whoa. usually outside the royal palace, like the Tower of London, which was built in the year 1070. People were angry. A thousand years ago, this was happening <laughs> outside the Tower of London. Therapy did not exist. No. 
and like people who were 12 could be king so it was like, really confusing <laughs> yeah yeah so burning at the stake was another form of cap- capital punishment this is all mm-hmm. so fucking game of thrones it is yeah it's like the flayed man like I burning at the stake think a lot about so i was raised catholic and I mean, I learned about all this stuff when I was a kid because a lot of saints, a lot of Catholic saints were mm-hmm. martyrs and they were yeah. burned at the stake or they were St. Sebastian who was like uh, shot with arrows. Like all, all of this is like Dipped in, our... in boiling oil to yes. death. Like, yeah, or like yeah. Joan of Arc, St. Joan of Arc, she was burned at the stake. So it's kind of crazy. I'm just realizing now like how much I already know about this from childhood, which is really messed mm-hmm. up that yeah, me too. we are taught these like, things. W- so in England, we have fireworks night, which I will get yeah. on to later, yes. which, is to, <laughs> which is where we celebrate somebody right. being hung, drawn and quartered yeah. because they were caught trying to blow up the Houses of Parliament. Crazy. And we celebrate that every year. It's a really yeah. big deal. So, right. So, yeah, burning at the stake was another form of capital punishment used in England from from the year 1000 Mm. for heresy and into the 1200s for treason. So, for 200 years. Uh, It was also used specifically for women convicted of petty treason. And petty treason is defined as killing your husband or your employer. What? Kill a a man, basically. (laughs) will burn you to death yeah <laughs> the patriarchy is alive and well this is in the, the year worst 1000 <laughs> <laughs> and then just as a massive side note like death by firing squad is the most commonly used in the military mm-hmm. yeah so britain uh in history got this reputation for having something called the bloody code okay. which was the name given to the legal system between the late 1600s And the early 1800s, which made more than 220 crimes punishable by death. Okay. Things such as burglary, pickpocketing, cutting down trees, shoplifting. Cutting down trees? Yep. (laughs) That aren't yours. Okay. Some of the weirder ones being being in the company of gypsies for one month. (laughs) <laughs> like, i read i read this to carly earlier and she was like what if it's just like 10 days yeah or like <laughs> 18 <what> days <laughs> and then you know pow that's okay yeah, then like is somebody's it? like oh uh, day 30 all right you got an hour long. yeah <laughs> yeah um and the other weird one i found was strong evidence of malice in a child age 7 to 14 <gasps> years of Whoa, age that's horrible oh yeah doesn't matter how fucking old you are also, stealing sheep, cattle, and horses as well okay. was on there. So. That's how you scare a child into doing what you want. Hey, <laughs> if you don't listen to me, you're going to be hung just like that guy last week. You'll be fucking burnt alive. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially. Listen, so, little Jimmy. Yeah. Have you been hanging out with gypsies and cutting down trees? Because you are <laughs> fucked. Um, so, in 1783... Newgate Prison in London installed the new drop gallows that were made so two or three prisoners could be hung at the same time. Okay. So I think we've all seen depictions of that. There's like, yes. uh, uh, is it James Falco? And there's that um, meme and he's like, first time here. And he's like on the gallows. Uh, I don't anyway. know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, well, I'll send it to you. But anyway, it, okay. it's a meme. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of that in The Handmaid's Tale as well. They do like oh, mass yeah. hangings. Yes. Um, yeah. Which so, also, uh, it, sorry that uh, I just wanted to acknowledge okay. that that happened a lot in uh, slave times in the U.S. Just uh, uh, mass hangings as well, and there's pictures. It of just it goes and, to show, like, yeah, how many people you were killing mm-hmm. that you're like, fuck it, we got to do a bunch in one. Like I was recording these podcasts, we've got yeah. to get a load done because we've got too <laughs> much on fucking it's, hell but it's also just men thinking that they are having some form of control and it was it was controlling mm-hmm. uh but also yeah. uh, on the other side of it it's men being afraid that they're losing control so they have and it's to do rich something men. as extreme yes all but all these people were poor yeah because all the crimes that like you know stealing and stuff right right um would be something that poor, that rich people wouldn't do. Cutting down a wouldn't tree have to do. because you probably yeah. need firewood because you're cold because you have no money. Yeah, 
so classism is alive and well also mm-hmm. uh so so newgate prison no longer exists but it's it was in central london near the old bailey mm. so like the most famous court in london in central mm-hmm. london like next to saint paul's cathedral kind yeah. of area in 1790 hanging replaced burning for treason okay Whew. <laughs> thank god <laughs> yeah. um but <laughs> But witches were still burned at the stake. Wow. Uh, primarily in Scotland. Like, Scottish people were, like, loved burning witches at the stake. Like, wow. that was where it was most highly concentrated for Is some reason. Is Scotland, like, uh, comparing to America, like, Puritan, like, kind of has those uh, religious views more in Scotland? I don't know. Like, I could be wrong. I, ugh, I don't know enough about Scotland to tell yeah. you. Yeah. But I do know that they would, and at, especially at that time, they would probably have had loads of tiny little villages everywhere yeah. rather than right. like a metropolitan hub. Whereas right. even in 1790, London was a, was a port Always. of business. Yes. Yeah. As was Bristol, as was Liverpool. Like, right. whereas I don't know how much that applies up there. Like maybe they had, a, and had, they've got a lot of little islands. and Yeah, you had Glasgow and where, Edinburgh, but yeah, they were still And I'm sure Edinburgh small. had a lot of business. Yeah. But yeah, they don't, they have a lot more like little islands, like off of the mainland and stuff. So they probably were a bit more Any, superstitious maybe. Any uh, Close Scottish community. people listening, you can weigh in. Like, because yeah, we don't, I don't really know. know, let us I'm know. I'm guessing. Tell us your yeah, opinions. I'm completely guessing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, as I said before, if you were of noble birth and you were condemned to die, you would usually be spared the rope and you were beheaded because it was considered to be more humane. Okay. So that's why when you see, like, Henry VIII's wives and stuff, yes. they were yeah. beheaded. Because right. hanging is a bit a more rich, undignified, right? Rich people's execution. Yep. Because I think if you're beha- I think if you're hanged, you if it doesn't go well, you'll be strangled to death, mm-hmm. and or your like I said last week or the week before, or your head will fly off. Yeah. And you would piss and shit yourself right. and convulse. Yeah. So it's and it's long undignified. Right. Yeah. Whereas, Whereas like beheading, chopping your head off, yeah. head done. Like over yeah. in a second. Yeah. So um, in 1806, um, Member of Parliament Sir Samuel Romley, a barrister, so basically like solicitor, lawyer, Mm -hmm. um, he succeeded in repealing the death penalty for minor crimes. Oh. And he also, in 1806, he ended the practice of disemboweling people while they were still alive. That's so late. That isn't long ago. That's when, I mean, America was still being swing. born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we didn't, I don't think we carried that practice over of disemboweling. It's mostly for, like, treason and shit, though. Like, sure. It's ba- barely yeah. used, but still, it's an option. Right. Like, so, certain regions with their own laws, such as Scotland, Wales, and Cornwall, were particularly reluctant to implement the death penalty for petty crimes. And by the 1830s, executions for anything other than murder had become extremely rare in Mm. those areas. Okay. Um, They're all Celtic, basically. So in 1834 to 1837, Liberal MP, Member of Parliament, William Ewart, abolished hanging in chains and the death penalty for stealing. Okay. So like all that like cutting down tree shit, hanging out with gypsies. That yeah. we got rid of that in 80 to 1806. That's good. Thank you, Sir Samuel Romley. Yeah. And then um, in 1834 to 1837, we got rid of hanging in chains. Is I'm assuming either hanging them by a chain or hanging them while they're chained up, and death penalty for stealing. Okay. Is gone. Which good. I think. Yeah. I think that's fair. So because what it, um, like what are most people stealing for? Again, you're poor. Not a lot. You need food. <laughs> like, no, you need food. You need money. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So in 1861, the death penalty was abolished for all crimes except for murder. Mm-hmm. So these are the crimes you can be killed for in 1861: murder, high treason, piracy with violence. Mm-hmm. So taking over a ship that's not yeah. yours. And arson in the royal dockyards, setting fire okay. to the queen's ships. Yeah. Okay. 
Public executions were banned in 1868. Good. So that's still, that's I good. feel like that's still... Very early, late. Very late. Very yes. late. Very like late. The, there were photos around at that time. Yeah, loads. Loads. And there's <laughs> loads of photos in this article that like... Okay. I could, I suppose I could put up, but... Yeah. Um, so this article is from like history.com. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. It's a really good article, actually. So, in 1899, newspapers ran a campaign to stop two women being executed for murder as they were thought of as innocent Mm. or not sound of mind. Okay. However, they were executed anyway. Oh. So, in 1899, people were like, really, this is not cool. They're starting Um, to wake up. Yeah. Uh, In 1908, the Children Act banned the execution of juveniles under the age of 16. Good. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so this is 1908. What a world to live in. 120 years ago. No, 110 years, 112 years ago. 13. Maths isn't great, but just over 100 years. And then um, the death sentence for pregnant women was abolished in 1931. What? I know. Both these changes brought the law into line with the long existing practice of not executing pregnant women or women convicted of infanticide in, their fir- in the first year of their baby's life. Okay. So I think either people like didn't really know about cot death or they were starting to understand about it or... They always blamed the fucking... mother before that. Yeah, like okay. people, d- babies die all the time. Yeah. For no reason, especially when they don't have like jabs and stuff in right. like 1931. Back and then. And you've got like fucking tuberculosis yeah. and whooping cough and right. shit. And they were so, giving their babies opium and whiskey to calm down so yeah women got a little bit of a break there i guess um as did abolishing the death penalty for under 18s in 1933 okay and then no one below the age of 18 has been executed in britain since 1887 wow so clap for us yeah um (laughs) well done (laughs) Between 1900 and 1949, 621 men and 11 women were executed in England and Wales. Okay. So that, that I mean, the percentages on that yeah. are fucking mad. 2%, I think, roughly, I would love of women. to know what those women did to yeah. warrant that. They must have... That would be a good episode, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if there's only 11... You probably, exactly. I could probably cover them all in one episode. Exactly. Like, yeah. So, ten German agents were executed during the First World War under okay. the Defense of the Realm Act in 1914, and sixteen spies were executed during the Second World War under the Tre- Treachery Act of 1940. Yeah. So that's kind of war fodder. I think um, that spies have, uh, no matter what country, they get the worst punishment. Uh huh. Like, and you know, even like, now. when you sign up to be a spy, yeah, you know that that is a consequence, potentially. Right, right. Which, I'm not saying, like, it's okay. I'm just no. saying, you're not stealing a loaf of bread. No. You're selling, you're, you're killing people, basically, because you're, you're yeah. selling, like, secrets out from under people. So, after the end of the Second World War, capital punishment became more of a, like, a bone of contention. Mm-hmm. The election of the Labour government, way. hey <laughs> Fucking love Labour. In 1945, meant more seats in government who were against the death penalty. So it actually started to get like properly looked at. Okay. So one of the most famous cases that started the end, it was like the beginning of the end of the death penalty for England, was mm-hmm. um, the case of uh, 25-year-old Timothy Evans in 1950. Mm-hmm. So he was convicted of killing his wife Beryl and, ba- and his baby daughter Geraldine. At 10 Rillington Place, which if you're an English true crime aficionado, this might be ringing some bells. Why? Um, So it went without much attention until 1953 Mm. when John Christie, who lived in the basement flat of 10 Rillington Place in Notting Hill in London, was found to have the bodies of seven women under his floorboards. What's at 10 Rillington Place? Is there like... A ghost possessing people? Is there? I don't know what's is there it now. The portal to Satan's Hell? home. <laughs> I know. Basically, there's a fucking amazing BBC drama, and it's got in it. I can't remember her name. I think she's called Josie something. The actress that plays um Villanelle 
in Killing Eve. Oh, okay. She's in it. Yeah. She plays the wife, Beryl. Jodie Com- and- Comer. I think that's her name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she, uh, she's in it and she's really good in it. Oh, and I'm it's so yeah, so it's that. A- What's it called? It's really good. Uh, it's called Rillington Place. Oh, okay. Yeah. Basically, he offers, in air quotes, backstreet abortions. Mm. That's his ruse to, like, okay. get people to come in. That's get like terrifying. Women to come into his house. Yeah. It's fucking Vul- horrible. Again, vul- vulnerable also, women. I, I'm not letting any man near my fanny. Like, <laughs> if I'm going to get a backstreet abortion, it's a woman only. Mm. Like, a fair. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, I'll let a woman have a stab at it quite yeah. literally but yeah. i'm not you, you don't know what you're doing and you got me into this mess yeah like no backstreet men abortions this yeah. is why abortion should be legal because otherwise you go to fucking john christie and end up under his floorboards mm-hmm. texas so um and do you know who else used to offer backstreet abortions fred west did he yeah i did not know that so it's like an actually quite a good ruse to get a very vulnerable woman in yes. a very vulnerable position. Yes. In your power, yeah. like so- somewhere you can kill her, and she's not going to tell anyone where she is because it's nope. a secret. Yeah. She's going to be even if you just... ashamed. She's going to be. She's going to do she's whatever you fucked. tell her because she thinks that you know best. Yeah, it's just the most horrible yeah. ruse to get somebody under your control. But anyway. Anyway, they found seven bodies under under John Christie's floorboards because okay. Timothy and Beryl lived upstairs in Ten Rillington Place and um, John Christie and his wife lived downstairs. Yeah. He also killed his wife okay. um, and put her under the floorboards. So eventually when he was caught, John Christie confessed to murdering Beryl and Geraldine. So he murdered a baby. Mm. So he was executed in 1953. Um, so John, Wait, Paul- John Christie did yeah or okay so poor old timothy evans her okay. husband yes denied doing it and said that it was john christie and they were like nah you did it oh and hung him anyway oh my gosh so he got like post humusly <gasps> excused no well thanks that makes so it all better i'm not sad. dead or anything yeah <laughs> fuck's sake that is so, so sad yeah it's a really shitty story great drama though mm. um really well acted <laughs> okay. uh so another notable death penalty case um, that really started the end of it for us was a woman called Ruth Ellis. Mm. So she was the last woman to be executed in Britain. Okay. She was hanged in 1955 wow. for the murder of her abusive, violent boyfriend, David Blakely. Mm-hmm. She shot him outside a pub in Hampstead, North London, and the public saw her as a battered woman who committed a crime of passion. Yeah. So there was loads of sympathy for her and um massive outcry when she was executed yeah um people don't like you executing women basically no is the is the general vibe in england right like they'll kill a man no problem <laughs> <laughs> they're not keen on killing the ladies so in 1957 the homicide act was passed and it restricted the death penalty to only the worst types of murder so in 1957 you could get the death penalty for and it's the same in America. So in course of a theft. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, they say like, it's a death penalty case if you are if you do a burglary and you kill someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you were already trying to rob them. Yes. And then you killed them. Right. And if you, you hadn't already... been robbing them, you yeah. wouldn't have killed them. It's two crimes yeah. on top of each other. Yeah. So mm-hmm. same in England. Okay. These are punishable by execution in the course or furtherance of theft. By shooting or causing an explosion... While resisting arrest or during an escape. Yeah. So, for example, you're doing a bank robbery. Mm-hmm. You shoot a police officer trying to get away. Or you right. shoot a member of the public trying to get away. Yeah. Of a police officer. So, if you kill a police officer. And the if explosion. You kill a pr- sorry. The explosion yeah, part no, is, is like the... The explosion part is like... That's pretty much a form of terrorism. So, I can mm-hmm. see that making sense. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, if a prisoner kills a prison officer... Mm. That's okay. death penalty. Yeah. And the second of two murders committed on different occasions. So like ser- if you're a serial killer, basically. Right. Okay. And then in brackets, if both done in Great Britain. So you could murder <laughs> someone in Spain and that's none of our business. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we have to clarify this just in case. Yeah. They, and how both has to be here because I can't be fucked to travel. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
I'm not getting the files. Yeah. This change in legislation reduced hangings to three or four per year in the 50s and uh, very early 60s. Okay. Uh, But capital punishment still remained highly contested. People were not fans. Mm. So on the 13th of August 1964, Peter Allen and Gwyn Evans became the last people to be hanged in Britain. They're both men. Mm. They had murdered a taxi driver and were doing so in the furtherance of theft. So it made it into a capital crime. So they were trying to rob him and they killed him. Okay. So in 1965, the abolition of the Death Penalty Act suspended the death penalty for an initial five-year period. So they were like, we'll see. If you want it back in five years, Mm. you can have it back. But it was made permanent in 1969. So we are done. Sit um, on this and, and think on it for a little bit, and we'll revisit. Like not forever. It's not yeah. forever. Yeah, it's, it's still around. <laughs> Just try like a trial. bad smell. <laughs> yeah. So then, um, the death penalty for murder was abolished in Northern Ireland on July 1973. So they were a bit later. Okay. Uh, but I believe that Scotland and Wales were 1965, uh, 1965 and 1969 as well. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so following the abolition of the death penalty for murder you can still get the death penalty for okay okay causing a fire or an explosion in a naval dockyard ship or warehouse okay and that's until 1971 okay espionage until Mm -hmm. 1981 wow piracy with violence until september 1998 what treason until september 1998 and then there's loads there's loads in a list that are like purely military um offenses so okay. like uh purposely fucking up a mission yeah. or fighting for the Shit. enemy what what is under the umbrella of treason like that trying sounds... to kill the queen plotting to kill the monarch okay. or trying to blow up parliament okay that's, that's what treason. treason is okay yeah not like burning a fiver or anything. No. <laughs> That's what I was like. Like, how extreme is it? Is it like speaking against the queen or no. uh no. like you know, sixteen hundreds treason with yeah. Speaking against the, the monarchy stamping or stamping on a coin. <laughs> yeah, stamping on a coin or killing a swan. Well, even if you killed the queen now, you couldn't be executed for it. Right. But up until 1998, you could have. Yeah. Wow. So, which funny enough, I think is the year Diana died. Coincidence? (laughs) Coinky dink? (laughs) Conspiracy theory Mm. episode upcoming. Yes. Um, Listen to our past conspiracy theory episode about Princess Diana and make your own decision. (laughs) I think we all know what happened there. I'm Paige, the host of Reverie True Crime. I tell stories of helpless victims, vicious killers, predators watching their prey before they strike, survivors, petty crimes, people we think we know who do the unthinkable, and the dangers that lurk not only in the dead of night, but in plain sight and the light of day. Every once in a while, I'll also tell stories of the frightening paranormal, elusive cryptids, haunted locations, and conspiracies that may be silly or thought-provoking. You can listen to Reverie True Crime wherever you're listening to this podcast. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at Reverie Crime Pod. Facebook, Instagram, and even Tumblr at Reverie True Crime. Remember, stay safe, be aware of your surroundings at all times, and take care. Basically, though, I think they had causing a fire or a naval explosion in a dockyard till 1971 was because we had beef with the IRA. Yes. And they were blowing up shit. Right. So that's why that was kept around and mm-hmm. espionage into in the eighties, same reason I think. Yeah. Russia Piracy with Northern violence. Ireland, all that. It's Northern Ireland yeah. shit. Basically, it's a hangover from that. Mm-hmm. However, no executions were carried out in the United Kingdom for any of these offences after the abolition of the death penalty for murder in nineteen sixty nine. Okay. So the last hangings were in nineteen sixty nine. That was it. No more. 
Yeah. Okay. You guys didn't even Death. bring over the lethal injection. You didn't have any no. of that. You didn't have nope. a chair. Nope. Wow. Only ever hanged mm-hmm. people or chopped their heads off. Yeah. Well, until like in the dark ages when people were doing fucked up shit. <laughs> <laughs> um Nevertheless, there remained working gallows at Her Majesty's Prison, Wandsworth, London, until 1994, mm. which were tested every six months until 1992. So wow. someone's in the hope that it'll come back. <laughs> this gallows is now housed in the National Justice Museum in Nottingham, which I would really like to go to. Yeah, that's And if anyone's been, let us know how it is, because I want to know if it's worth the trip. Yeah. Um, also, in August 2011, a survey showed that 65% of Britons support reinstating the death penalty for murder. Okay. And 28% oppose it. Whoa. So, so that's crazy, isn't it? Although, yes. listen to who's fucking voting in this. Men and respondents aged over 35 are the most likely, <laughs> obviously. Oh. <laughs> fucking gammon men. Come on, guys. <laughs> anyway, we all know what you think. So... <laughs> You've had the floor for about 400 years. About I think it's time to give it a rest. Of time. <laughs> yeah. So um, in June 2013, a new bill for capital punishment in England and Wales was introduced into Parliament, sponsored by a Conservative MP, obviously mm. a Conservative. Of course. Fuck the Tories. <laughs> Fuck you all to hell. Member of Parliament, Philip Hollobone. This bill was withdrawn. They were like, no, uh, yeah. we're not fucking debating. We're not debating that. Don't yeah. be fucking stupid. I'm glad. Um, because yeah. the, if that were in America, people would be like, oh, I'll take a listen to that. No. English people were like, no, stop making such a massive just, fuss. Just stop it. Calm down, Philip. <laughs> 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 fucking maniac. So um, to polish off, I thought yes. I would. <laughs> I thought I would do like a summary of some of the most famous executions that we've had okay. in England. Yeah. And it starts in on the 19th of May, 1536. Ooh. <laughs> so, again, apologies for the length. No, I love so it. So Anne Boleyn was the second wife of Henry VIII. And technically she was the Queen of England at the time. Okay. She was beheaded at the Tower of London. Yep. As, as we said, only mm-hmm. the upper classes got beheaded. Mm-hmm. Um, on f- trumped up charges of adultery, incest with her brother George and treason. So that Harry, so that Henry could marry Jane Seymour, uh, mostly believe, probably made up, right? I'm sure. Yeah, they were made up. Yeah, just they trying to up. find and excuses. I, yeah, I think they were completely made up, and I'm pretty sure Anne Boleyn is the mother of Elizabeth the mm, First. Okay, because Henry didn't have any boys that survived, so that's why we got a female monarch, Elizabeth the mm-hmm. First. He chopped her fucking mother's head off. Wow, <laughs> so that's but nice. Kept of you. her around. Kept yeah, Elizabeth yeah, so she the first. I doubt she had much to do with her dad. Like yeah. I think she was probably just like taken not care of by anyone else. Right. Until he got a boy, which is what he wanted. Yeah. So the 13th of February, 1542, Catherine Howard, the fifth wife of mm. Henry VIII. And Henry. the queen. She's a qu- she He fucking killed her. Well, it's divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. Alyssa. If you were a past monarch, you would be Henry, I think. <laughs> I like to think I'm Elizabeth the <laughs> First. Although she did actually execute quite a few people who she thought were treason, like okay. committing treason. She's also a Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, when is her birthday? I'll tell you. Oh, you know, actually, Henry was just doing it because he wanted to sleep with other women. I don't think that's you. Oh, it's so, a Catholic. Yeah, because yeah, he didn't want to be Catholic anymore. Because in, in, Catholic, in Catholicism... You are married to your spouse forever. Till death do you part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's Queen Elizabeth I's birthday on the 7th of September. She was born. Anyway, so yeah, she was born on the 7th of September. So she's Virgo. Happy birthday. Yeah. (laughs) She's a bad bitch. So yeah, so his fifth wife, Catherine Howard, um, 1542, um, she was the Queen of England at the time. So it was just like, I don't give a fuck if you are the Queen of England. <laughs> I'm going to cut your fucking head off because yeah. I'm the king. I'm so the she king. was beheaded for adultery yeah. after having an affair with her cousin, Thomas Culpepper. Okay. Her lady-in-waiting, Jane Boleyn, related to Anne Boleyn, just stuck around Jeez. as staff through all the wives. <laughs> oh, and also Viscountess Rochford. So he beheaded a woman that had been on his staff for... 
over like over a decade what? and a viscountess and his wife because he said that the two other women had um facilitated her adultery okay so they're all gone he's just he just <laughs> doesn't like women he wants to have sex with them and then not think about them anymore and he was like a massive fat guy with gout by the end of his life. He was like huge. They had to make him a different coffin. Like, I, I imagine I'm not fat shaming, like but very uh, low self esteem king who's projecting all of his insecurities onto the women that are surrounded by him. And because he's king, everyone has to listen to him. And, and he was having him. affairs all over the shop as well yeah. but like, were they I affairs think... like i'm sure it was a case of like this is the king i have to do what he says yeah he'll yeah. just drag you to his room after dinner exactly. or whatever and be like yeah suck it yeah so, <laughs> that'll be nice yeah with your gout ridden penis oh. um so then uh on the 13th of april 1546 um alice glaston became the youngest known girl legally executed in england at age 11 <gasps> for an unknown offense no fucking hideous poor little so, girl poor alice and then on or around the 18th of july 1556 on the island of guernsey so you know, mm-hmm. jersey and guernsey which are islands just off of england mm-hmm. which should belong to france really they're really closer to france than they are to us <laughs> but <laughs> We were like, nope, ours. The infant son of uh, Peritone Massey, less than one day old, was ordered to be burned by <gasps> bailiff Hyla Gosselin with the advice of Roman Catholic priests nearby who said the boy oh. should be burnt due, due to having inherited moral stain from his <gasps> mother. That's horrible. So I'm assuming she was either a sex worker or she got raped or she wasn't married. Yeah. She had an Or affair. something of that nature. Yeah moral stain from his mother oh my goodness yeah so we've moved on to the tudors now yes um <laughs> moving on <laughs> moving on july 1584 this is elizabeth the first she's grown up and she's now queen okay sir francis throckmorton was executed for plotting to assassinate her okay in order to pave the way for the spanish in- spanish invasion invasion <laughs> so she was like off with his head. Yeah. <laughs> 20th to the 21st of December, 1586, Anthony Babington, John Ballard, and 11 others were hung, drawn, and quartered for conspiring to kill Elizabeth I. Okay. And replace her. This is a her. little bit more legit than having a bunch of affairs and yeah. finding uh, reasons to kill those women. Like She seems a bit fairer. <laughs> yeah. Although some elements of her dad are still around, but... Mm-hmm. She's got a little bit um, more of a head on her shoulders. <laughs> so, little history lesson. Okay. Anne Boleyn was the second wife. Mm-hmm. Um, Jane Seymour, I believe, is the mother of Mary the First. Okay. Of Scotland. Yeah. So, there's a good movie first. that came out a couple years ago with yeah, is it good? Saoirse Ronan and uh, Margot Robbie, and they play Mary of. Sc- Queen of Scots, and then yeah. uh, Elizabeth the First. I liked it. I really like that they kind of portrayed Mary, Queen of Scots, as like very righteous and like a, a confident woman. And Elizabeth mm. the First was like she didn't have children. She apparently maybe couldn't have children, and mm-hmm. uh, she was very uh, insecure about her looks. And it's oh really? Yeah, it's just like a good. Uh, and she was jealous of like Mary because she was younger and more beautiful and more confident, yeah. and um, it was a good portrayal. Hmm, I'll, I'll watch that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they're cousins basically. Yeah. James the Fifth of Scotland is um her dad. I don't know how that relates to Henry the Eighth, but I really can't get into it because the fucking royal family is so long winded. <laughs> it's so complicated. But it's so complicated, and they all fuck their cousins and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um. Mary, Queen of Scots, was trying to become Queen of yes. England, and yeah. um, Elizabeth was like, no fucking way. On the 8th of February, 1587, Mary, Queen of Scots, was beheaded. Okay. <laughs> like mm-hmm. She was like, yep. this is over. Yep. Apparently, though, I heard that she didn't really want to do it, but yep. there was no other option. Yeah. Because she wouldn't stop 
trying she kept to trying be queen. to pursue it, and uh, yeah. all the people surrounding Elizabeth. Well, according to this, the movie, yeah, uh, it's, it's based on like um, letters and right, like records from the day. That but yeah. the the movie was like Elizabeth the first. She just wanted to chill out and like make art and not worry mm-hmm. too much about like politics and everyone surrounding her was like well you're the true queen so you should probably kill anyone who's trying to take over from you so that's kind of how it went down i think she didn't want to kill her cousin but she was like yeah oh, i'm gonna have to or this is just gonna go on forever right <laughs> basically and she was like just stop chill out mary she and... was i think she put her in the tower of london for ages didn't yes. she and was like just stop yeah <laughs> like basically yeah. She, like tried to put her in a time out and it didn't work right <laughs> so she had to bed her awful and then three years after that on the 25th of february um 1601 robert Devereux, second earl of essex was beheaded for treason after he attempted to start a rebellion against elizabeth the first okay so anyone yeah. who tries to betray her is mm-hmm. uh, brown bread. Yeah. So um, the gunpowder plot is another one of our huge executions mm. that we we um, celebrate. celebrate every year. Yeah. On November the 5th, we have fireworks night. Mm-hmm. So um, on the 30th of January, 1606, uh, Robert Wintour, Thomas Bates and John Grant were hanged, drawn and quartered for their involvement in the gunpowder, gunpowder plot. A conspiracy to blow up the House of Lords in order to kill King James the First. Okay. And then, literally, the next day, obviously they were fucking so busy they had to do it over two days. Yeah. Sir Everard Digby, Robert Keyes, Ambrose Rookwood, and Thomas Wintour were hanged, drawn, and quartered for the involvement in the gunpowder plot the day after the execution of their fellow conspirators. So they wow. they literally had so much work to do they had to split it over a couple of yeah. days. Jeez. On the twenty. 20- on the 23rd of February, 1629, John Dean became the youngest person known legally executed, known to be legally executed in England at the age of eight or nine for arson. <gasps> oh. You killed a child. Poor kid. I don't know how many people he killed with the arson, but like, he's Imagine nine. That fully grown <laughs> men are saying to an eight-year-old child, you are being put to death and then going through with Are they even going to know what that means? Just imagine you're the size of a man and a, the size of a child. I know. Just put him in a room. Make him have time out. That's it. Yeah. He gets put in the Tower of London. Yes. <laughs> the 21st of June, 1751, Alexander Geddes was hanged in Gallo Hills in Aberdeen for bestiality. Oh. The last okay. known execution for bestiality in Scotland. Wow. They don't like witches and they don't like you fucking their livestock. Or Basically. arson. Or arson. Oh, no, it was the English that uh, killed the little kid. Okay. Um, It was the Scottish that killed the guy for fucking... Right. <laughs> I'm assuming a sheep or a cow or a horse. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really want to think about it. Um, So, the 14th of March, 1757, John Bing became the only British admiral executed by firing squad by the Royal Navy. Mm-hmm. His crime was having failed to do his utmost <gasps> at the Battle of Menorca during the oh. Seven Years' War. Do you just sit there? Like, it must have been exactly. pretty obvious. Were well, you having a nap? They're yeah. just like, you did not do enough death. <laughs> like, you've got to be so shit in a war for them to kill oh you afterwards. Gosh. If the war didn't kill you, we're getting it because you were just yeah. so shit. <laughs> what was he doing? They must have been so furious with him. Yeah. Maybe they caught him, like, having a wank or something and they were just like, are you serious right now? <laughs> There must have been a very critical moment where he was supposed to do his part of his job and they're like He was just Dude. yawning. Yeah. <laughs> Scratching his ass. <laughs> and someone went, When we finish this battle, I am fucking executing this motherfucker. <laughs> right. So, um on the eighteenth of march seventeen eighty nine, Catherine Murphy, a counterfeiter, was the last woman in England to be burned at the stake. Okay. She was, in fact, strangled before the fire was lit and thus not literally burned to death. Well, I guess that's a small nugget of uh, good news. Yeah. The penalty of burning at the stake, which at the time applied to women and not to men, was Mm -hmm. abolished the next year. Okay, that's good. They also took counterfeiting, like, really fucking seriously back in the day. Yeah. Um, They saw that as a form of treason, really, because the bank belonged to the king. Right. I watched a very boring documentary on that, which I found pretty interesting. 
But no one else would. Uh, so on the 22nd of December 1960, Anthony Miller, 19, was hanged in Glasgow's Barlin prison for the murder of John Kremlin. He was the last teenager to be executed in wow. Britain. 19. And the penultimate person to be executed in Scotland. So in 1960, we're fucking hanging a 19-year-old. Mm. So 20th of December 1961, Robert McGladdery, 25, was hanged in Crumlin Road, Gowl. Go- How do you say it? The Irish place. Gowl. G-A-O-L in Belfast. Yeah, that's it. Um, said it right. Yeah, so he's he's 25 and he was the last person to be executed in Northern Ireland for the murder of Pearl Gamble in Newry. Okay. That's in 1961. Mm-hmm. In On the 4th of April 1962, James Hanratty was hanged at was hanged at Bedford after a controversial rape murder trial. Wow. And then I thought this was super interesting. In 2002, his body was exhumed and the Court of Appeal upheld his conviction after his DNA was linked to the crime samples. <gasps> wow. So yeah, in 196, that's worth, I think that's worth going into that murder a bit yes. further maybe at some point. So Definitely. Yeah, so he was, he was hanged and then maybe someone said, oh, he didn't do it. And they were like, well, we'll fucking dig him up and prove that he did it. In 2002 so, as well. 2002. Or- 40 years later. Literally 40 years later. Wow. I wonder if it was like his family who were, who tried to Probably. fight his innocence or somebody like that. Who else would? Yeah. Care. Unless the trial years. was <laughs> Unless the trial was done a very bit, badly. Yeah, a bit botched. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought it was super interesting. Yeah. And then there's just two more. Okay. So on the 15th of August, 1963... Henry Burnett was hanged aged 21 at Craig Inch's prison in Aberdeen for the murder of Sh- Seaman Thomas Guyon. And that was the last hanging in Scotland was in okay. 1963. Again, another like young person, 21 years old. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then on the 13th of August, 1964, Peter Anthony Allen was hanged at Walton Prison in Liverpool and Gwyn Owen Evans at Strangeways Prison in Manchester for the murder of John Allen West. Those were the people that robbed the taxi driver. Mm, okay. So they were the last people executed in Britain. So wow. Scotland was 1963, Ireland was 1961, and we were 1964. Yeah. And that, that... is the history of the death penalty <laughs> in England. Wow. It goes on for fucking ever. <laughs> Just like our damn history books. <laughs> yes. That is so extensive, so interesting. And it's nuts to think that you guys abolished it, which is great, but we're yeah. still going. We're still like, yeah, keep it around. Dude, why not? That's what happens when you let that's too many cooks. Too many cooks spoil the death penalty broth. Like <laughs> you're all going, no, I want it. Like We're like, look, one rule for all. We can't be fucked to be messing around. (laughs) The end, amen. Yeah, we do think we're small and we do things like quickly and by the book. Yeah, (laughs) but still with a little bit of um, tradition because you guys didn't, uh, you guys still hung people. That was it. You were just like, no, we're not trying anything else. We've forgotten the hung, drawn, and quartered part. We're not going to do that, but hanging, that's it. We're not adopting any new method. They are pretty savage, though, and yeah. by the point of like the sixties, like I said, there's a guy called Pierpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a film about him, and you can just Google him. And basically, he was like a fucking master hangman. Like mm. he could just look at someone and be like, "I know exactly mm. how long I need to make the rope drop what to, a to just skill. snap your neck immediately, so you don't suffer. Wow, you do just pass out like and die immediately." It's like someone just turning the lights off. That's like, so that's crazy. He's like, you know, he's in a pub, and they're like, "So tell me something interesting about yourself." Something that <laughs> I think no he laid pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been a target, so I'm not sure anyone really knows his actual identity and name and yeah. stuff. But yeah. apparently, like, he wouldn't even tell his. He wrote a book, but apparently, like, he wouldn't even tell his wife like who he'd hung that day or like. Wow kept his like life a real oh, secret oh yeah because and... they the when you hang people then you have a thing over your head so nobody can see you right yeah 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 you have like a forgot about that part sack on your face yeah so hanging although it seems quite uh antiquated mm-hmm. was actually really carefully thought out. like there's not many botched hangings yes like yeah not guys got in it down. recent history 
Yeah. I mean, I'll Google it, but I don't think there are because... Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Again, we found an exact formula to make it work. Right. You had this um, guy leading the way. We had special murder man who... Yeah. yeah. Where I um, went to um, uni in Winchester, they had mm-hmm. a prison and the prison is... It, Winchester is so small. You could spit at the prison from the hospital. You could wow. spit at the university from the hospital <laughs> and the prison. Like, it's all so close together. And there's like a statue of King Alfred in the middle of it holding up a sword. And like, oh, it's wow. like the oldest. The round table is there. You can go and see the round table, yeah. even though that's not real. It's like, a myth, right. But yeah. Still, it was great fun. Yeah. Yeah. Super interesting. Yeah. So. Um, and yeah sorry my point was in winchester prison they've got like the old gallows and stuff wow they just don't use it anymore it's cool to i just i love museums and and especially going to somewhere like england or like an old country not like america we have great museums (laughs) but you guys have that's why i wasn't into australia yeah like right i think to like countries um that have no modern history mm-hmm. you have to like the outdoors and nature and the natural mm-hmm. history right which i don't well, love i should <laughs> so. i mean i should mention with australia and america there is a very rich oh there's indigenous history, history obviously indigenous history yes but when you start talking about westernized immigration and um the histories of this stupid death penalties and all that stuff that we introduced it's just yeah. like that's very young for australia and america especially and you yeah. guys have your whole like hung drawn and quartered gallows from the 1700s that you could still go see mm-hmm. and uh and like honestly like a little kid in ireland like tripped over a fucking viking longboat like yes <laughs> like that's the kind of shit you find in england exactly. you can go out with a metal detector and find a coin yeah. with like a king alfred's head on it like i mean you could do that here and you could go out to the desert and find indigenous markings on the rocks and things like that but mm-hmm. there's because we ruined their history and we also they were like, too busy dying and being oppressed to make museums exactly and keep Th- records that's what and- i mean like we <laughs> we ruined their record keeping because they did and it, a lot of it was verbal or stolen and, and it, yeah, yeah and we ruined that but yeah that's, we're going down a whole nother hole and i oh, think that God, we should really wrap, are. <laughs> we should wrap up <laughs> this part two amazing episode Thank you, Talissa, <laughs> for the history of the death penalty in the That's UK. okay. That's Thank awesome. you. So I do find it. I'm so. I'm such a ghoul. I find it so interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then, mate. I will speak to you next week. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. All right. Love and you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Transatlantic Crime this week. If you liked what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, you can find us on Twitter at transat crime pod instagram at transatlantic crime and on facebook with transatlantic crime podcast thanks bye